Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rum and a Couch video number 78. Dave here from Manchester Rum Festival. And for our third time only, I'm actually off my own couch and on somebody else's. I'm here at the Spirit Manchester Distillery with one of the co-owners, Seb. Hi. Seb is, well, I've known you for actually since you started. Yes. Yeah, several six, years seven ago. Seven years yeah. ago, something like that. And mainly down to, I suppose, the main brand that has been such a highlight of Spirit Manchester Distillery, which is Manchester Gin. However, in the last several months, it's come on to a year, is it, nearly? Uh, we're probably about eight, nine months in now. Eight, nine months yeah. in? Let's call it a lockdown miracle that <laughs> Seb's been able to get a brand out of rum. Manchester's own rum as well. And that's why I wanted to come down to Spirit Manchester Distillery here in the city centre itself and experience what One-Eyed Rebel is all about. But before we do, Seb, yes. I think we need to have a bit of context behind what the Spirit of Manchester Distillery is all about. So do you want to give the folks at home a bit of a, well, why are you here in the first place? So yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to drag on too much about the love story about me and Jen falling in love over a bottle of gin, uh, which is about 200 yards from where I was sat. Uh, but effectively, we did fall in love and we had a huge passion for drinking, believe it or not. I can believe in that. 20 somethings. So we, we stumbled across, uh, well, originally gin distillation because um, we thought it was done in a big factory in a big scale, but we actually found that you could do it on a tiny, you know, one metre tall, 60, 60 litre still. And so we thought we'd set our own distillery up. So we actually did that from our dining room. Uh, That's a very old school, a very old, so small at the same yeah, time. Yeah, so it's a 60 litre still, she was called Wendy. And we used to distill through the night for the first 50 months while having a job. So we'd get up at two, we'd get up at four, we'd get up at wow. six. Turn it off at seven, then go to work and come back. So I think in the first 50 months, we made something like 25,000 bottles of gin from the dining room, all distilled, bottled and labelled in that hellish room. <laughs> uh, and then effectively we've grown and grown and grown. So uh, we were, the timing wasn't brilliant. So we're now sat in six grade two listed archways that we renovated from scratch. Uh, we opened the new site uh, in September 2019, the heady days before oh, the okay. dreaded yes, C word existed. Knows. Um, so effectively, yeah, we've got a cocktail bar here. We distill everything on site, literally just down in the in the fifth arch on our new thousand litre still, which is called Wonderwen. So this is where all the production is done. But yeah, effectively, you know, it was born out of a love story and, and some fucking hard work along the way. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's, it's myself and Jen that sort of run the business. She does, I like to say, a lot more of the actual running of the business. Oh, the back office. I, I do more. Well, not back office. She 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 makes sure we're alive as a business. <laughs> I do more of this the fluff, if you will. Uh, so that's my. I'm a fluffer. Oh, fluffer. Okay. okay. <laughs> I can believe that. I won't so. be fluffing you today. <laughs> well, I know you got some quality liquids. Well, yeah. So well. let's see so. what happens. Okay, so obviously a lot of people who are watching this, especially locals, would obviously know of Manchester Gin. Mm -hmm. You obviously won a fair few awards for both the packaging as well as the liquid itself. Yep. So I think a lot of people know that you can make some great liquids. Yes. Obviously you've dabbled in vermouth as well. Mm -hmm. So and yeah, we've got 45 vermouth, which is an English vermouth made entirely of English wine. Again, it was actually made at our old site in Temperance Street. Um, so yeah, we've got 45 yep. vermouth. I think that's the thing, because I remember when I first came across the fact you were doing vermouth, it was it was outside the box thinking. Yeah. Because English vermouth isn't a, a big category, yep. it's mainly the French styles. And I think a lot of people also perceive that rum is predominantly Caribbean-esque mm -hmm. as well. But when it comes to something like One-Eyed Rebel, when I was, uh, when it was mentioned that you guys were bringing out a rum, yeah. I was intrigued because of your past experiences with the gin and obviously the vermouth had sort of just been released at that time as well. So I was I was automatically intrigued. And yeah. I think from what I've seen, a lot of people have sort of had that renaissance of British styles of rum. Yeah. A bit more focus, a bit more understanding as well. Rumfest obviously has helped yeah. bring that into Manchester. So why have you gone for a rum? Why have you gone for free skew so quickly as well? Well, rum. For, for the first half is, is a product I've always loved. Dare I say it's probably the product I drink most of now. <laughs> uh, you know, when you've been making gin for six, seven years and you try every batch and you know, you're drinking it at breakfast for, you know, the, the research cooking, purposes. The research purposes. Of course. Um, you know, you can sort of burn yourself out a little bit. So I've, I've always been a huge rum drinker. I think when we look at One Eyed Rebel, um, when we wanted to make our own rum, it was all about using all the things we'd learned over the last six, seven, eight years of distilling. And so we make no qualms. We are a botanical rum. We distill with the botanicals in the still. 
and we do a single shot method, similar to how you make gin. So it's almost like for us how uh, uh, people move from loving vodka to then discovering gin because all it is is redistilling that same base spirit and yeah. adding flavor to the distillation process. So for us, that was where we originally started and we wanted to take everything we'd learned and really impart some huge flavor in there. I mean, the original reason we actually had uh, uh, molasses on site was because uh, now the dreaded C word, um, we're literally above or below, sorry, the Nightingale Hospital. And of course, yes. when, uh, so at the, when it was being built for the, so the Manchester Nightingale, they rang me, I think, I think eight days out or nine days out and they couldn't get hold of hand sanitizer and yes, they course. literally couldn't open until they had it on site and so I repurposed our still and our mixing tanks and got any alcohol I could get in and the one I got in was molasses based spirit and um, that came onto site and then we made hand sanitizer for them so they were able to open and whenever you leave alcohol near a distiller he's always going to dabble and i think that was that was literally you know we we've always wanted to make a rum and we're laying rum down now uh for maybe three five ten years however long it's going to take but um you know we're looking at the sort of spice category market we think we've made an amazing product and it was literally we had the equipment within the distillery and i'll be honest fucking lot of time on my hands because uh we used to <laughs> oh, sell a lot of our products to bars and restaurants and awesome. i don't know if you know they were closed for a fair while. They come across. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I suppose it was, it was a happy circumstance that, I suppose, moved your plans forward a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it moved it forward massively. And I think, ultimately, it, we only make products that we love and, and we thought we could genuinely make something incredible and really showcase what we've learned in the gin distillation world and bring that forward. Yeah. So listen, it's not... It's not an aged Caribbean bum that spent 20 years in a barrel, and but we don't make any qualms about that. You know, we are honest and open about what, what we do with the product, and hopefully, you know, the consumer's loving it, which they are so far. Fantastic. So, we have three bottlings here. Yes. But before, well, so we will, before we crack them open, way ahead of it, but what is One Eyed Rebel? Why, why the name One Eyed Rebel? Is there a story beyond getting the rinse? <laughs> is there a story? Do you know what? We wanted to create, obviously, only a product like Manchester Gin. Um, I'm not saying you limit yourself because we've had huge support from the North and from anyone that loves Manchester yeah. in its heart, but we wanted this to be uh, a, a spice rum that was just British, so it didn't really have a, 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 a so link it anywhere a, a geographically. Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, and I'll be honest, this is again when Jen's running the business, you know, making sure we can afford to do everything and, and, and pay all the staff and whatnot. I spent a week. Uh, just on synonyms and <laughs> and good, you know when it's so I'd say to anyone at home, when you finish watching this, try and come up. If you were going to open a rum brand, try and come up with a name because it's funny. The ma the name literally means nothing in terms of how well it's going to sell, how good the product is. True. And once you get recognised for that name, it's irrelevant what you called it in the first place. But yet it's so key in that name recognition. It's so bizarre. Like when we were naming the bar, it's a it's the hardest and easiest thing because it's irrelevant. People will come to the bar if it's good. They won't. They don't care. They didn't like the name. But yeah, it's it's what's within it as well. Yeah. So so basically, going back to the point, I wanted three words in it. Uh, the next brand we're coming out with, I want I want something and something. I think maybe. Okay. It's, so it's just a stylized version because I really like um, Behind Closed Doors, which is a nightclub in Manchester. And they abbreviate to BCD, and I really like how it's got a large, longer name and shorter name. Yeah. So OER or One Eye Rebel. Fair play. And it's a one eyed rebel, so connotations of that sort of pirate esque, even though we don't play in it. But the rebel in our case is actually the pirate, oh, the pirate, the parrot on the front, rather, which has burnt down the ship. So. Fantastic. And okay. the, pirate, the parrot has its eyes covered as well, so. I was going to say, because obviously, it, it, as a packaging, I mentioned it before, but having all three together, it really does stand out. And I, I know that. Especially the Manchester Gin and the Forty Five for Booth, mm -hmm. it's a, such it's a proud thing. But yeah. you know that on a shelf in a in a bar, or obviously on a supermarket, or a retailer, or wherever you're going to find a bottle of rum, yeah. it needs to stand out against everything else. Yeah, because we are in a bit of a renaissance of rum itself right now, especially British bottlers and producers. So, did the packaging have to had to make it to then get people on board with it? I think, the, I think, like you say, packaging is key. I think ultimately, you are the way a brand is going to grow, there is beeping outside, which I hope you can hear, uh, <laughs> someone's moving a massive crane. Um, 
the packaging only goes so far. It gives it recognition on the bar so you can see it, but ultimately you live and die by the liquid inside the bottle. So the liquid has to be better than the label, but yeah. it gives you that instant recognition. When I first saw the brand, I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't actually love it because you literally can't read where it says One Eyed Rebel. And I'm like, there's no brand, like it's very hard. You have to be really close to see. Right, so you would have to pick it up to actually figure out what it's actually called. But in terms of recognition from the back bar, a big bright orange and with the bird on. It does stand it out. Stands Especially out. compared to other brands as yeah, well. Yeah, so we were, you know, we, if you look at all the products we've designed from custom bottles to our gin to our vermouth, and, and we've got some other things in the pipeline, uh, we always, you know, you have to be brand focused as well because you have to get that recognition. And that look and feel of a product is, is half the battle. Certainly at Christmas time when you're getting gifting, great gifting options. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's important to look the part as well. Yeah, fantastic. So going into the liquid itself, before yeah. we try it, this was the expression that first came out, wasn't it? So uh, this is, for the most part, our main expression. And it's the one that we're actually focusing on from a brand perspective. So one of the flagship of the This the is the flagship of the, of the three, and um, it, it is, it's probably the one I love most. Okay. These two have been born out of, we're working on collaborations both in Europe and also Chile, unbelievably. Okay. Uh, so some of the flavors that we've released are, the born out of that a collaboration with distributors. Right, okay. So, and also with a view to getting into larger groups who are more... So are you understanding more sort of trends that groups are recommending to correct. go for? yes. So, you, so I suppose you're listening to what customers are, are asking for. Correct, yeah. But this is the, the, the one I double, uh, I, we call it the original, the OG. That's the sort of flagship of the whole brand where the other flavors sort of sit behind if you see what I mean. Okay, so what is in it? Because obviously you say you've got molasses and yep. that's sort of how the rum was born from it. Yep. But have you aged this or have you brought it's aged rum in? What, so, no, so it, it's, it's a, well, I call it a new make spirit. So it's the high strength. Uh, when we originally actually first experimented with it, it was actually a sugar beet. Right, because okay. that was the only, that was the only uh, molasses space. Well, because we needed spirit to make the hand sanitizer. Yeah. So when we originally started experimenting, we were using sugar beet, but obviously now we want to export to Europe and further afield, you know, the, the EU laws on rum state. So it's actually from sugar cane, it's a high strength sugar cane base, okay. uh, which actually comes from Guatemala. Um, and then we basically use the same process to redistill the whole product. So we do it like we do gin. So we put vanilla, a, a shed load of ginger in there. I think, we're, you know, if you talk about gin making, and we use to make, to use a thousand litre still, we're looking somewhere in the re, I won't give the recipe away, between <laughs> four and five kilos. We use, and that's the predominant flavor of gin, and then everything else goes down to as low as 10 grams. Yeah. Ginger, I think we're up to like four kilos per wow. run. Um, so it's a huge hit of ginger. When you open the still, all you smell is like gin and ginger and cinnamon. And, and so it's got ginger, cinnamon, clove, vanilla, orange, uh, almond, and I want to say a bit of licorice in there as well. And so all these flavors that bubble around together attach to the product. Yeah. And then we, uh, the caramel, uh, we have caramel for sweetness and for color. I was going to say, because obviously I think a lot of people who would see something like this yeah. would, would expect that age kind of profile. Yeah. But the transparency you've just given there actually makes a lot more sense. You know, it's, it's the added caramel, it's the sort of, it's the essences and the flavor profiles from those botanicals itself, which yeah. are, would contribute a little bit to the color, I'd, I'd imagine as well. Not really. No? Okay. Uh, but obviously it is also down to the flavor profile. Yeah. So, as I mentioned before, yep. I have had one of the very first bottlings of this, yep. uh, but it has adapted so over time. Tweaked it. So basically, you know, when you, whenever you do your first full run, you know, we develop things on, well, first of all, on a two and a half litre still, then we develop it on a 60 litre still, then you go into a thousand litre still. There is nuances when you yeah. go to those. And when we did our first run, I mean, we, all these go well with Coke because, you know, people are going to drink it with Coke. The gar the mixes we're going to give you today are different because we want to showcase how it actually works with different... It's a versatility for the bottle. Yeah, different uh, mixes and different uh, ginger beers or ginger ales. Um, but when you actually hit that with some Coke, it was just too vanilla -y. Right. Okay. And that was because the length of boil... So in a 60 litre still, you're only going to boil for like four or five hours. On a 1,000 litre still, you're boiling for like 11 and it was the length of boil that's actually drawn out more vanilla than we were expecting. So yeah, the first batch, so now the batch is now locked in in terms of uh, flavor profile. So we just, tweet, I think it was about 15% vanilla we took out. Okay, okay. They're all 40% ABV as yes. well, aren't they? 
Yeah. We like booze. <laughs> so do I. So do yeah. I. So which I is... would have done it higher, but Jen, again, who helps, I say helps from the company, if she watches this, <laughs> uh, uh, Yeah, I'm not allowed to go above 42 anymore, apart from doing Navy Strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm intrigued if you're doing Navy Strength. We way. will do. Because you heard that here first. Yes, we definitely will. Um, because I, I don't know if I've mentioned I quite like booze. Uh, so yeah, there'll definitely be something coming out. Okay. Well, let's give this a go because, like I say, even though I've had the first batch, there's going to be some tweaks and yep. differences. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have to admit, this is the first time I definitely had these two, mm -hmm. and it will be the first time I've had, I suppose, the, the newest uh, blended recipe of, as well, like I said, the core range of the trio itself. Yep. So. Pass it to you, my sir. Thank you very much. So, 40% ABV. Cheers. Cheers. Yep. And the first thing I do pick up is actually quite dry, isn't it? Yeah. So, it's just got a lovely. You obviously get that hit of ginger. You get you a do, little bit yeah. of vanilla in It's very stem in ginger as well, though. Mm. It's not got that kind of caramelised ginger profile. So, what we're using is actually uh, the ginger root ground down into a powder. Right, okay. So, it's really intense when you get it. And you know, when you get that first sip in there, you get that heat of ginger. So I'm still getting that ginger gut sort of going down, but then you've got that sweetness of vanilla coming out as well. You'll get the cloves in the background and a little bit of orange in there as well. And then that caramel sort of washes. Well, it well. waves a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Very kind of mid song, but it's actually quite around the side of your mouth at the same yeah. time. This is when we, you Always know. mouth washing. Yeah. So when we go to, <laughs> when you look at, at what I think makes a quality gin, mm. it's, you, should, you shouldn't taste everything in one hit and it drop away. Sort of develop it should over meander the, within yeah. your mouth, and that's sort of what we've tried to develop here. Oh yeah, you get the heat right at the back of your mm -hmm. throat, but it's it's not instantaneous, which, as you say, it's probably it's it's, it's an experience. Yeah, I've never been a you massive heard that fan. Here first. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a massive fan of something that sort of hits you all at the same time and just yeah. disappears. Well, Especially if you're going to spend some quality money on something yeah. that you've been recommended as well. Yeah. It like any any spirit should take you on a journey as far as I'm concerned, any flavour profile should, it, it should meander in different ways. And, you know, what, that's what we talk about in the sort of art of distillation, that anyone can give you everything I put in my room, but to go and find that fine balance so that you do taste this, then that, and that, and this. Yeah. That's the, that is the, the sort of art of distillation. Well, I would say it's also, it's, it's not, I'm not saying it should have been either, but it's not thick. Nope. So in my mind, is there added sugar to this? It is, but not a lot. So not if you lot. look at a lot of rums, you know, again, you can go up to, I want it, is it 80? 80? I can't remember the I rules I forget the anymore. rules sometimes, especially at the moment with the EU stuff, but. Yeah, well, we, I think we're copying over the EU rules anyway, aren't we? I believe we are, I believe. Yeah. Uh, So no, there's probably half the sugar you'd usually expect to see in a rum. Oh, well, no, it's half. We didn't go overly sugary. We didn't want an overly sweet product. And I was going to say, because I'm, I'm guessing, from my own experience, that would just mask a lot of the sort of yeah, intricate yeah. flavours. And that's the point. Uh, you know, it's a 40% ABV. We're not trying to hit the lowest common denominator of what this product can be. We're trying to elevate and showcase what a botanical rum can be. And by hitting it full of sugar, I, I don't think you're giving testament and, 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 and the right sort of path for the flavours that are in the product. So yeah, so it, I mean, there is sugar in there. I could find, I can't remember how much sugar that's is fine, in there. Um, but it's, it's nowhere near, anywhere near the limit. Of I was going to say, cause it, it doesn't have that thicker no. viscosity towards no. it. Like you're drinking rum syrup. Yeah. And, and it's I mean, not I, overly it's, sweet. No. And that's the point. So we're, whenever we make a product, it has to be something that we enjoy drinking. And, and overly sweet products is not, Just not I love it. a dessert, <laughs> but I like a rum old fashioned with my dessert. Yeah. And I can't have sweet and sweet together, so. Yeah, you get more of a sugar rush than the alcohol kick, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So, as a mixer, what sort of recommendation for this? So, we're actually mixing this with Franklin in the bar. Uh, we're mixing this with Franklin's Mediterranean mixer with a little bit of ginger in there as well. I've not had this one before. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go. <laughs> Hell for leather. So, like I say, it does go with ginger beers. You know, it's a really versatile product. Um, with the ginger beer and the ginger base of this, Sometimes it can be, if you like ginger and fiery ginger, you definitely go for that here. It will go with Coke and, you know, a lot of the time, all my friends come out and drink it with Coke. But yeah. this is just showing that we know that Spice is going to go with Coke. And so our purpose of it is never going to be with Coke. I mean, it's just... But I suppose also knowing, obviously, what Manchester Gin is, is all about, it is showcasing how versatile the liquids that you create can yeah. be. Because I've noticed, obviously, with the brands I work with specifically, that... If it's a one-dimensional brand, especially a new one, mm -hmm. if there's only one way to drink it, you do alienate a lot more people. 
you know, if it's just for cola and it doesn't yeah. work with ginger beer, then it's it's only going to work for a certain amount of demographics. But I think what I've seen, especially with obviously the feedback from Rum Festival, yeah. uh, for this year especially, there was a good balance between new and old school brands, both local, yeah. regional, national, but also the types when it comes to things like sugarcane juice, yeah. molasses, and of course even a hybrid of between both of them. Yeah. And the general consensus from this year's Rum Fest was I bought a variety of bottles because yeah. I know I can use them in yeah. whatever mood I'm in. Yeah, yeah, Whether I'm hosting a party, yeah. having something to enjoy after dinner, even something in the morning if you were that you know, so inclined. Well, and Christmas Day, there's no reason. Well, that's what I'm thinking, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Presents. But that was a cool showcase that it wasn't, well, I need it just for this because I love Coke. Yeah. I could do a lot with it. I and think I think well, that, that's the general sort of way that people are going for these But well, I think as well, the more educated you get on the different mixers, it, Again, to go back to our you know main core, which is gin, um, you can change a product completely by what you mix it with, and yeah. you can change whether it's a hot day, whether you mix it with uh, you know the gin world lemonade or a lemon tonic or something. Like, you know, you can change this product up that you might want a coke in the winter, but you might want something like a mandarin and ginger mixer. Thank you, Calvin. So the the thing you mix it with can have a huge effect on the actual flavours that you draw out from the product itself, and then can change. You know, I change what I'm doing. You know, the weather is dependent. I think your mood as well. Yeah. Having a hard day at work, why would you Straight. need a mixer? Yeah. <laughs> the good thing is, obviously, I've never, I've never had this mixer before, but yeah. it's not masking the aromas that you pick up straight from the rum itself. It's still shining through quite nicely. So it is basically a flavoured soda. Um, Which is becoming quite a popular thing yeah. at the moment, isn't it? So low sugar. Um, oh, yeah. Quite clean. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just nice and clean. I wish it was sunnier. Uh, you would enjoy oh, it more. Well, well, this is true. Yeah. It could be summer outside. Nobody on that. <laughs> It'd still be raining. <laughs> so yeah, so that I think shows what it can do. It's not. To, it's not too overbearing. It's nice and easy drinking. Nice and clean and nice and smooth. We have got a cocktail made with it. Oh. Uh, is that the one? Which one? Is that one hydrable? Yes. So. What have we gone for? Dan? Here's one I made earlier. This is. A painkiller. Nice. So, someone's torn off the spec for me, because <laughs> again, in our house, uh, Jenny's queen cocktail maker, I am chief drinker era. So yeah, we've got one eye dribble, 50 mil, 50 mil pineapple juice, 25 mil fresh lime, 20 mil orange juice, 20 mil orange and cassia coconut cream, 50 mil dandelion and burdock syrup shake, we're done. Well, that's good. Wow. Oh. To be fair, I'm, I'm a massive fan of painkiller because yeah. with the gunpowder of Puss's rum, mm -hmm. it's thick, it's a yeah. beautiful kick in the face for a velvet cushion. This is actually a lot lighter, but it yeah. actually retains a sort of um, the body towards it as well. We've got a nice thickness from it from the, the cream. Oh, so I think we actually have this on our Sunday roast uh, menus as a, if you've had a little too much on Saturday, have one of Coming those, for a pain yeah, painkiller <laughs> and a bit of roast beef and you should leave relatively happy. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know if that works. Ooh. We might have some Sunday roast, no, I don't. <laughs> but yeah, it's look, you know, I think, um, you, you, you know you it's a good cocktail as well. when you can keep drinking it and drinking it. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't know what time it is now for the viewers, but it's definitely painkiller time. Oh, it's always painkiller time. Mm -hmm. See, this is the cool thing, and ladies and gentlemen, if you have the opportunity, if, if you purchase a bottle or you already have one at home, even though a painkiller, as an example for this, even though it's more traditional with something like Pusses Rum, it doesn't mean you always have to use that brand. It's great to have a variance, and as Seven's quite rightly said, with a brand such, such as One Eyed Rebel, it's to showcase that versatility, do give it a go. At home, nobody should ever tell you how to drink it. We've got three different great ways here, on its own, Beautiful yeah. flavours coming through. Not as thick on the viscosity, so it really hammers home more the nuances of the flavours. So then have it with a, a, I suppose the less traditional mixer with no cola, but to have it with a flavoured soda water really enhances and lengthens out the flavours without masking it too much either. And then to have a painkiller, not maybe the thing you'd think of straight away, but it does work. Yeah. And it works with a beautiful um, balance of flavours as well. Because I can still get, in these two mixers alone, the rum, coming through yeah. and I think that's the big thing especially for something I've not had yet as well yeah I think as well when you're drinking a cocktail you, it, it, you don't want to mash the main part of the drink like I think you want to taste it I think that's why a lot of the time and that's why 
you know, we may look at a, an overproof one so that it really punches home uh, the flavour. So, you know, when I'm drinking a rum co- uh, sorry, gin cocktail, I, a Navy strength product, you know, yeah. gives you a little slap around the face and lets you know I'm still here. Let's see who the boss is, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm delicious. I'm not going to finish it all because there's three more cocktails coming. Very true. So, like we say, this is the core out of the trio. Yeah. These two have been more for the feedback that you've had yeah. from your partners. So these are aimed at a couple of groups and uh, for some export market as well. Okay, so obviously two very different styles of, of flavour profiles yeah. here, but were you surprised with the, with the um, request? Or were you like, well, that makes a bit of sense because we've seen that our own personal experience Do you know well. what? I, I'm still a massive... So we've agreed, I think, maybe eight markets in Europe, albeit the dreaded sea we're going to talk about, has delayed the delivery till I think the, about February now. Okay. It's already in Chile, if we have any people from Chile watching. Um, and I'm amazed by the feedback I've already had from it. And there is that sort of growing demand through Europe and seemingly Chile now uh, to have these different sort of flavor profiles. I think when we looked at them, we knew we were gonna to have to do some others because we were already in talks. Uh, obviously 2022 is hopefully gonna be a big year for the hospitality industry. And so we're talking to a couple of big groups and these are the sort of flavor profiles. When we were making cocktails with One Eyed Rebel, the amount of times in a room you use a maraschino cherry. Yeah. In, I mean, I, there's countless cocktails where you bang a maraschino cherry in. So we're also well, kind of cutting out the middleman by making a black cherry One Eyed Rebel. Okay. So that you less need that maraschino cherry in there. You still need a bit of sugar syrup, but you won't need that cherry flavour going through. So I suppose you're lo- also looking at ease and of speed of service as well. Correct. Yeah. For the bigger groups, you know, when you're, you know, 100, 200 venues. Yeah. You know, there's a standardisation that needs to No, no, that makes sense. I mean, to be fair, I, I always use the example of uh, Absolute. When they yeah. brought Absolute Pepper out. Uh, I think off memory it was like the first flavoured vodka back in the 80s. Right. Okay. And they made it purely down to... Bloody Marys. Yeah. If it's an ease of having something that doesn't require an extra ingredient yeah. or an extra bit, and it's already in there, yeah, but it service. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, I, I, I get that. And it's, as a bartender, as I was, and obviously as a brand representative now as well, yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Especially in this day and age where there's so much, um, I suppose, so much high volume venues, not even just in city centre alone, but yeah. even on the outskirts yeah, yeah. and big and national but groups. Think more and more, even if you go to, the, you sort of, I say illusion, you know, if you go to big pub groups, so we work with a lot of them already, you know, there, you know, 15 years ago, if you'd have gone and asked for a cocktail, you got slapped, yeah. thrown out the pub. Now they've all got cocktail menus, and it's about creating that ease of service for those venues that they're yeah. still able to deliver a drink that is delicious and also a cocktail. That makes sense. So let's go for passion fruit and coconut, as it's in the middle, and it's, we're working our way through. <laughs> all right, so passion fruit and coconut. Yep. Still 40% ABV. Still 40%. Exactly the same makeup, not obviously regarding the flavours, but as the rub itself, yeah. as the one eyed rebel. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we. Uh, what would you look at that? I get passion fruit and coconut. Well, look at that. It's a. Uh, that's good. I mean, I, I was going to say, I mean, it, it sounds so easy to say that, but. Yeah, right, it's, it's, it's the Ron Seal range. Oh, just exactly what it says on the tip. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. We uh, we distilled the product again, uh, slightly pared back version of our original recipe, and then we go through the same thing where we add some sugar syrup, some caramel, and then we add some uh, natural passion fruit and coconut syrups as well. It's interesting actually because every time I go back, I get a more obviously the citrus element. Yeah. But depending on, I don't know what it is. I, you get the coconut straight yeah. away, obviously, but it sort of comes in and out. Yeah. But that's, and uh, I, I always think, and again, I know we're tasting this straight, when you lengthen the bit, you still get more of that flavour out, sort of about 30% ABV, just to really open up that sort of full, well, I call it a bouquet, but I don't know what you call it in the wrong world. Bouquet. Bouquet will do. Yes. Uh, so it opens up that sort Ooh. of full flavour. Oh, there you go. Again. <laughs> in a good way. It's developing and it really bumps up. Yeah. Especially at the very end. Mm-hmm. You kind of get that citrus kick. Yep. But it's like little small bursts. But that's what I mean about the, the flavour develops yeah. within your mouth. And then when you start using it in mixers and start using cocktails, it opens up fully and then you get that full sort of experience. You still get that undercurrent, 
of cassia and a little bit of ginger you right just you know just tickling you but yeah. I, you know 10, sort of, 15, it, that's the drier profile yeah. it's but not too dry either 10 15 seconds after you've drunk the product yeah, yeah. and i think that's what we're talking about where we're, we're we're trying to show kids the best of what we've learned over the last eight what seven eight years it's also quite light and fragrant mm -hmm. which in comparison to this which has got a bit more heat towards it yeah. I suppose as expected like with the ingredients for me. I mean, this one's called Fiery Ginger. It is our staple. Uh, I mean, I love ginger in, in most things in my life. Um, but yeah, you just sort of pair it back a little bit and then you sort of, like I say, you've got a bit more cassia, a bit more cassia in there as well. I'm liking that. Thank you. I'm liking that a lot. Should we try it so with a mixer? Yeah, so again, is this a recommended one? or? So this is our recommended serve. Again, I won't go through it again. It still goes with Golden Cola. Um, other brands are available. So, do we have to do that here? Oh, you can start that everywhere. Right. Um, so you're going for Fever Tree by the look of it? Fever Tree, and then we've gone with, because this has got a slightly more delicate flavour as to when we get to cherry, we've gone ginger ale for this one. Okay, yeah. So, uh, to, to be fair, I've, I've noticed over the last maybe year or so, and maybe it's just down to lockdown perhaps, but I do seem to prefer ginger ale. I don't know if it's the lighter profile. Oh, I know, I know. If I Jen know. could hear I you know. now, she'd lose her <laughs> shit. Uh, I, I think it's just maybe it's down to I've been drinking a lot more younger spirit of rum. And so you don't get that, that, that fermented product that's yeah. actually killing the, the flavour. It's yeah, more no, delicate. And, it, and this is why the reason we have this with ginger say, ale versus ginger beer. Jen, the other half, <laughs> she is obsessed with ginger beer. She, <laughs> She thinks this is the, the death of the world, <laughs> ginger ale. But it works really well with the product. But uh, yeah, she's a big, if it doesn't say beer on it, I'm not drinking it. <laughs> but yeah, no, with a younger spirit, exactly like you're saying, that you don't want too much ginger to actually kill the flavor of what, because ultimately you want to try what you're drinking, whether you mix. So at the moment, I've done a double measure and I'm still only using one bottle of tonic. Yeah. Because that's as much dilution as anyone needs in their entire life. So there you go. Thank you. Four hours you through. Oh yeah. It's not lost. Yeah. I think you got you taste more of that coconut coming through. A little bit of sweetness coming. Yeah, you actually it, it's actually a little bit smoother as well. Yeah. Okay, so you got more of the fragrant elements with the rum itself. But now we got ginger ale. But like you say, because it, yeah. it feels like a young I mean when you we get to cherry, obviously cherry's a much more powerful flavour. So it can take on the the ginger beer, but I think it's a nice, soft, easy drinking. It's very easy drinking. Yeah. There was there, there is some garnishes to go with these, but I am quite lazy. So. <laughs> I mean, I'd also say because I think a lot of people will perceive, especially coconut, yeah. as very summery. Yeah. You know, you think pina coladas, you think yeah. the beach. We're in the middle of winter. Yeah, sadly. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's still slip. Well, it's not snowing at the moment, but it has been over the last couple of days. But this would not look out of place on a winter menu because it's that it is still an experience. Yeah, it's warming but cold. I know yeah. that's what you're saying. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's just out of interest when you're sort of coming up with the ideas of how other people should approach this new bottling because this has only been out for a handful of weeks, hasn't it? These two, yeah, because these are specifically that. Like, yeah. Project, so, so yeah. when you're obviously pitching it to a group or yeah. pitching it to a retailer, so we can obviously enjoy it at home. Yeah. Do you always suggest, is it more down to, well, is the seasonal serve, so we recommend cola in the winter, ginger beer, or do ginger you know ale best we're, in the summer, or? We're, we're just delighted to buy the product. Uh, no, I think ultimately each group needs to, and they have their own head uh, mixologist or, or, or whatever their title may be. Um, so you're, you're, you're up for them to be creative. Yeah, and I think ultimately, like you said before, I think it's not for me to dictate how people drink their products. If you've bought the product, you own it, you fucking do what you want with it. True, true. Um, and uh, we have a big thing on garnish and a big thing on like, even when we go back to our, I don't want to keep referring back to gin on a rum podcast, but we, me and Jen can't agree what our perfect service for our signature product because we like it different ways. So yeah. in our bar, there are two serves written down that you either get said serve or gen serve. And, but if you don't like grapefruit, don't fucking let someone put it in your drink. And if you don't like ginger beer, don't accept that someone said yeah. oh, it goes best with ginger beer. You are the person buying it, and you're the person enjoying it, and enjoy it how you want. That's good. That's good to hear. All I'd say is don't put shit in your drink that doesn't do anything, <laughs> like juniper berries. But anyway, that's <laughs> so or obviously, a star anise. But talking creativity, it's yeah. I, I like this with ginger ale. It's a softer yeah. approach. But as a cocktail point of view, 
cocktails. So we've actually just it's a great segue there. Look at that. Should work on telly. <laughs> so we've gone for a godfather. Oh, okay. So the big Not your more traditional sort of rum drink you'd expect to see, but why a godfather? Uh, I'll be honest, we have a team of mixologists in the bar, uh, they they said it's delicious, so... So you're going off of, well, as we've just been saying, every bar and every bar group, and your yeah. own included, yeah. is there to play around to see what they think is the best to make this shine. Yeah, exactly. The and, you okay. know, and again, like I'm at pains to say, I'm really good at drinking cocktails. <laughs> Coming up with them, we had a cocktail competition for the whole company. Uh, where we had the office, uh, the the backroom staff, the managers coming up with cocktails. I can safely say mine and Jen's were the shittest. Because um, <laughs> creating a product is, I say easier, and we're used to doing that, but the knowledge to go and actually make a cocktail, it's a completely different, uh, a completely different knowledge that I have yeah. within me. So the, the, this it's is a different approach. Is it? So for anyone who's, uh, not aware of what a Godfather, God, oh, sorry, Godfather is at That's all. delicious. What have we got in here then? We have got, uh, it's equal measures of black cherry and amaretto. Right. With some, I want to say that's a maraschino cherry on the side. So this is this one? No, no, it's the maraschino cherry on the side as the garnish. Oh, sorry, it's, get it. Yeah. No, it's not. This is black cherry, sorry. I was thinking that. We're drinking the wrong product. <laughs> We were bound to make a mistake at some point, weren't we? So this is the black cherry I was going to say, I'm, I'm lacking some coconut in this. Yeah. I mean, it's delicious. It is. It's going to be a great uh, yeah. bring up to this one. Daniel. Dan, how are we getting on? Uh, 25, 30 seconds. We're about 25, 30 <laughs> seconds out from having the cocktail I thought we were going to have. So we'll park that for a second. <laughs> Um, it's quicker than you finish that one. And it's delicious though. <laughs> well, while well, we got 25, 30 seconds, yep. so we've got ourselves that kind of softer approach with this. Yep. Very fiery with this one. Yep. Knowing obviously what cherry in my mind can do and obviously yep. going off what the Godfather's offering there. Yeah, yeah. Is this is going to be a bit more of that richer sort of profile. You're going to get a richness. It very dark, dark berry cherry. elements. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly what we're going for. And this um, is, I would say, if you talk about versatility of the product, these two are the ones that can stand up to most in terms of you can put them with most things and you're still going to get that flavour yeah. through. So yeah, this easily stands up to Coke. We're serving it with a, a ginger ale, which I think is amazing with the product. But again, when we approach anything we do, I probably either drink my spirits straight now or I drink them in cocktails. Yeah. And that's probably where my actual drinking has changed. Still love wine and beer, don't get me wrong. That's an afternoon. <laughs> um, but yeah, I very rarely drink uh, spirits with mixers now. Okay. Uh, I usually have them with cocktails. Unless Jen's not available, then I will uh, use a mixer. Uh, but yeah, I think, that's, that, I think, and I don't know where, and again, I'm only using myself as a, an example, that I drink so many more cocktails now, and like old fashions is just sort of my go-to. Yeah. The problem is, you need to pace yourself. <laughs> or at least have a glass of water every time you have an old fashioned because <laughs> when that fresh air of Manchester hits your face when you leave a venue. Oh, the wind tunnel, yeah. Yeah. There's <laughs> <laughs> a different story by the time no, you That's a very this different part. story. I mean, this, this is the thing, isn't it? That I, 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 I've mentioned this, I think, in one of the last uh, Run the Couches bit. We've had a lot of time on our hands in the last two years. Yeah. In whatever scenario that you've been in, whether it's been hospitality or a different sector of work. But we've had more time to be creative mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. We've had more time to understand what we'd like to enjoy. Yeah. And maybe even have the opportunity to try something different. Mm -hmm. Where it's in a category that we know, obviously we're here for rum, but same for gin. People yep. are willing to try something else from the brand or a different style, different flavor pr profile. But also, especially in that first lockdown from what I saw, there's a lot of people having uh, you know, cocktail masterclasses over yeah. Zoom. And having the ability to realise that you can make a Godfather at home, it's not that yeah, difficult yeah, yeah. because yeah. you just need household ingredients yeah. and household equipment at the same time. And I think everyone's had that opportunity to understand that it's not scary to no. try something different. And now we're back into bars as well, here at the Spirit Manchester Distillery with three little words, to have that knowledge, understanding that you can walk in 
and maybe not understand what these three are yet because they are yeah. still quite new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But have the wow, look at that. Have the belief. I know why you did 25, 30 seconds, Dan. <laughs> to have the understanding and uh, the confidence yeah. to actually ask and try something different as well. Especially obviously the bartenders you got behind here as an example. For Do you know what? For the majority, and that's a great point. For the majority of the bartenders we have here and also our floor staff, they are mainly bartenders. So I think the more you ask questions, the more you get to know a spirit, the easier and more comfortable you are. I think, you know, I would hope gone are the days where a barman laughs at you for not knowing what, you know, yeah. a Sazerac is or whatever. I mean, I fucking hate a Sazerac. But that's bad. They're too dry. And I'm going to go on camera. I don't like a Negroni either. But anyway, uh, they're way too dry. I'm about to be accosted by one of the office dogs. Say, yeah. And this is Millie, uh, one of our office dogs, whose mum is... No, she wants a godfather as well. Um, but yeah, I think, I think like you say, people have got into drinking cocktails more. What I would say is what's critical to a good cocktail is good ice. Ah. So at home, if you're, I mean, we we buy these in. I mean, I they are expensive. It's, there, it's clear. I mean, yeah, they're expensive. Uh, but at home, all I'd say is get a three by th a three centimeter by three centimeter ice cube tray. Get two of them so that you've always got them in rotation because they take fucking maybe thirty six hours yeah. to properly freeze. But once you've got a giant ice cube, you can really get into the Godfather. You can get into just doing it on the rocks because nothing worse than shit eyes yeah. putting a good rum on the rocks and it diluting instantly. Especially when that. people think that then that is what the flavour of, of the Godfather is as well. Yeah. So yeah, uh, good good ice trays and get two of them so you've got them in rotation. That's all I'd say. That works. And on that note, we'll get the cocktail we should have I drunk. I would say, it's a good ice as well, by the look of it. Uh, well, they, well <laughs> a bartenders go mental for a Hoshisaki ice machine. <laughs> We've got two of them, apparently. <laughs> um, one does crushed, one does cubes. I'm not going to lie, that's very tiki looking. Yeah, well this is a coconut caipirinha. Ah. So we've got... So we're going to Brazil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If for our friends in Chile who have this product, <laughs> it's not too far away. Oh yeah, so you can get the... Oh yeah, there you go. You have to go look in. That's incredibly refreshing. Again, you still get a nice wave of the flavour profile mm -hmm. as well. The rum's still there, thank God. Yep. But uh, again, I think when we see crushed ice, I think a lot of people obviously expect the heat so, and they yep. know for a fact that after a couple of sips, it's just going to get diluted, 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 yep. and then you're just drinking water. Yeah. But if it's done properly, I also think if it's done in a more compact way, obviously there's quite some good flavours in there as well. Yeah. After a several sips, he's still going to have the impact, yeah. which is great. And the fact well, you can see, that I, I, I'm at pains to say the thing that keeps ice cold is more ice. Yeah, it's not a drink, so you see Dave drinking it. All this ice is still ice, and that's the thing that's keeping the ice below ice cold. Yeah, true. So yeah, it's chilling the glass, right? Don't be afraid to use more ice than humanly possible than every drink you ever make. Very true. Especially like if someone else is paying for the ice. <laughs> <laughs> That is very tasty. Ooh. I can say the, the rum still shines through as well, so I can see why. Even a Caprini, as traditionally, is more cachaça from Brazil, but yeah, I mean, as we not, saw with the painkiller, yeah. it's not defined as it's such. It's a twist. You're not getting that amazing fermentation uh, and that yeast profile that you would get from from a cachaça. Yeah. You know I mean, because it's that's what a cachaça product is. But this is a sort of a gentler version into a, yeah. a Caprini. I'm liking that. Yeah. And a beautiful presentation as well. That's what took the extra time. But he sliced the leaf on angle. So they, that's what you can expect at three little words. Only takes 25 seconds. Yeah, apparently. Uh, it was definitely more like a minute and a half. Um, I'm glad I'm not working this afternoon. I'm not anymore. No. <laughs> All right, so we've had a bit of a, a precursor to the, to the black cherry, but. Yeah, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. But uh, for the segue's sake, anyway. <laughs> Tell me about the black cherry. So again, as I said, I think I don't want to keep repeating myself. This probably was, we had this more in our eye to do next than anything else because the amount of cocktails we use maraschino cherries in. Yeah. And it was a case of how can we help the groups circumvent and still get an amazing cocktail and an amazing presentation while whilst not having to have maraschino cherries. Yeah. Um, Dare I say, the first thing I get from this 
It's a very Mancunian thing as well. <laughs> yeah, I think you might know what it is. Yeah. I get Vinto. I get Vinto. I also get a little bit of DB as well. Oh, well, that's that... on a bit. Of... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But also, a Slightly little bit of Dr. Pepper also. as well. There is a bit of a Dr. Pepper. Yeah, I think it's Dr. Pepper, not DB I'm getting. I get a bit of both. Yeah. I do get that burdock element. Right, what's the worst that could happen? Let's give it a go. So you, you do have that thicker mouthfeel. It's a little bit thicker, you're right. I suppose, again, as expected. Um, but not to the point of it's sweeter. No, it's just thicker. It's a little bit drier, actually. I mean, again, maybe it's because we said deadline and burdock, but I'm getting yeah. that kind of rinse. Yeah. You are getting things. that, yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, and you have that sort of, like I said, we changed the sort of profile a little bit uh, on the distillations, but you've got a bit more. And I would say, of all of them, that actually doesn't open out as much as you'd want. When you try it, try it straight. I think when you actually mix that, I think you actually open that full sort of flavour out. But it's rich, it's deep. You still got a little bit of heat coming through from the cinnamon and the cloves. There's a little bit there, yeah, yeah. right in the sort of centre yeah, of your yeah, mouth. Yeah. But it, it's made. I get that kind of rich forest floor style. Yeah, that's a great description. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Dave says. Um, it's it, Dare I say it's not as as longevity as the first two. No, I but I think I'm ex I'm not expecting it to be because of the sort of richer profiles. Yeah, but in my there mind, is more of a dominating flavour in that that is cherry that yeah. does dominate. I, I, in, in my head, yeah. something like cherry doesn't offer me a longevity in flavour. Anyway. And I think that is a, that is a very fair assessment of the product. If yeah. I'm being brutally honest, um, still forty percent as well. But always forty percent. We don't dick around here. Um, but then because of that longevity of cherry. When you start mixing it into a Godfather, when you start mixing it into cocktails uh, or, or a Jungle Bird, you know you start getting those real sort of flavours coming through. Talk on yeah. of which, let's go back. I was going to say because now I'm as well. The giant ice cube still there in its entirety, which means all we're drinking is the product rather than water. Um, I've lost the cherry. I'm going to get. Oh, sorry, no, that's <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's you, you get the rub. Yeah. Which I, I, I'm going to sound as simplistic as I can now. Yeah. If I'm going to ask for a rum cocktail with a specific rum, <laughs> or even a rum that I've never had before, but I got a good idea what it could be. Yeah. If I can't taste it, then it's a problem. Yeah. Same for a mixer. Yeah. And it's amazing. I I sometimes get it now. It's not as bad as it used to be, say, ten years ago. But there's still a handful of bars, even in Manchester alone, that. You just, you can't get what you'd expect. Yeah. And I think that's the downside. With something that's been crafted by yourself and the team, mm -hmm. especially for these latter two that have been defined by essentially the customers themselves, yeah. it's like a personal request. And if you yeah. can't taste it with a cocktail as, as simplistically as a Godfather as well, mm -hmm. then what are you doing wrong? Yeah. And I think, thank God, obviously this is like you say, um, the first time I tried all three at the same time especially, I can taste the rums, yeah, despite well, the different styles of flavour profiles, yeah, yeah. very different cocktails as well. Um, but this is the whole, you know, this is what we're trying to do with the versatility of the product, and, and you should never not be able to taste our product. Uh, and when you try them straight, certainly with the the OG or the original, whatever you want to call it, to some palates. I mean, the thing is, again, I get I, I forget that I'm used to drinking straight spirit. As I'm sure you do, yeah. like, I'm used to trying it off the still at 78% <laughs> and not like, but I'm going there, right, okay, right, okay, we're there. And when you do different cuts and things, you know, it, 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 the lowest I try it off the still is 65, 66%. And that is completely normal oh, to no. my palate. And now, yeah. so when I go to 40, I'm like, yeah, it's fine. And people are like, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> It's to fair. I, 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 so I, when I... you try that straight, I think potentially to the, to the un, I'm not trying to say untrained, to the, to the unblunted palette that we have. I, I always remember, I, I think it was on um, on Top Gear several years ago, and I think it was Damon Hill who said that you could be in the world's fastest car, yeah. but it's never as fast as a Formula One car. So as far as he's concerned, the world's fastest car is actually quite slow. Quite slow, is that? Because he's just, just been used to that yeah, scenario yeah, yeah, yeah. of being in an F1 car. Yeah. And it's interesting, because obviously most of them on the couches, as everyone knows, uh, watching the previous 77 of them, is I, I never really had the opportunity to talk directly because obviously this started in lockdowns. Um, but to hear from someone who physically makes it, yeah. you do forget sometimes that 
you you drink it as it comes, yeah. and then you start to play around well, with I'm, it and have that uh, finished product. We've got some barrels, so while we're laying down, like I say, uh, a different rum uh, with a different, completely flavor, a different botanical, and different completely flavor profile uh, in barrels. So a mixture of bourbon and ex rum barrels. I have some rum barrels in the distillery. Uh, Can you tell us where the rum barrels came from? Uh, the rum barrels plantation, so okay. a fifteen-year-old plantation, and the bourbon are uh, old forester. Okay. Uh, so it's more massively more skewed to the old forester than it is to the rum. Yeah. Um, when you open the rum, the, the the plantation barrels, and you fill it, all you get is that waft of <laughs> full-on plantation. It's, okay. It's quite. It, it is intoxicating. I think would be the word. Um, <laughs> but we still have them on. We've got four on site just so I can test how it's going so i think they've been laid down for about a year and a half now maybe, okay. maybe a bit less um but again it goes in a barrel we barrel it or we cask it six two and a half percent and i and i'm just used to trying it and then you give it to someone and they go Fuck, what's that and like, so yeah oh, it's I, easy. so yeah it's just it's only, just drinking rain it's only 62 morning, percent yeah. what is your problem it's fine. so yeah uh i have to remember that people aren't necessarily used to drinking <laughs> such high spirit and for breakfast as well. For breakfast, yes. Yeah. So, the last serve, as I said before, make some noise for the podcast. Me and Jen did uh, like taste it, like live tastings during lockdown. And uh, my ability to make as much noise as possible with an ice cube tray <laughs> is second to none. So yeah, this is just a good hefty version. I, in my eyes, I always learn, I say to learn, uh, I heard about something called a six second pour. Apparently I count quite slowly. Um, you did one Mississippi, one two One Mississippi, Mississippi, two, yeah. uh, one was out to, uh, well, I'll start again, <laughs> one Mississippi. So yeah, a six second pour is technically a double, isn't it, from a speed pour, although all speed pours are different. So that is true. So, um, so are we on, we're on ginger beer now, are we? We are on ginger beer because, okay. like we say, the sort of, the length, and, and I suppose the sort of richness that you get more compared to the other two especially, this will shine through a bit better yeah. than well, This one massively good. If you love a ginger hit, the original with ginger beer is incredible, but Makes sense. it can get spicy quick if you're not Yeah. If you're not ready for it's, it. It's, 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 I always say it's like adding elderflower tonic to an elderflower gin. You're Correct. just gonna get more elderflower. Yeah. Exactly. And it might add, God forbid, ruin your experience. Mm. I'll tell you what, first thing I get. As we said before, it's very. Yeah. Which is surprising. I like to say I prefer ginger ale over ginger beer myself. Yeah. But But I think actually this product stands up to ginger beer. Well that's tasty, isn't it? Yeah. So it, it, it it's a more robust uh, uh, cherry flavour there, I say. That's incredibly well balanced. Yeah. It's the way I make them. I, don't know. I was going to say, I don't, I don't want to give you too much credit on your uh, ratio skills. Yeah, but. Uh, more rums than tonic. Uh, more rum than uh, ginger beer, sorry. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. and um, We're going to finish all these when the camera stops <laughs> and do no more work. So. I'm a fan of that. Yeah. I think, uh, like I say, you still get the sort of little flavour profile. It is more predominantly cherry than anything else. But that is the the nature of the beast that is cherry. Yeah, that makes sense. Because like you said before, if we're talking about the Ron seal of, uh, uh, of what we're looking for, if it didn't taste cherry, you'd be pissed off. Yeah. And then, but you wonder make, what's gone wrong. to make you... it taste of cherry, you do have to sort of circumvent some of the, the more nuance of flavors because it is such a bold flavor cherry. Yeah. Whereas when you look at passion fruit and coconut, it's a bit softer. And if you go for the fiery one, you've got a lot more sort of round, Flavors. So, like I say, I think that works amazing when in cocktails. Uh, personally, the flagship. So, if you were looking at the brand in its entirety, you would you would do it as a triangle. Yeah. So, you would put OG uh, One Eyed Rebel at the front because that is the flagship of the brand. The other ones are born out of collaborations. That yeah. Are, but they still make amazing cocktails and great with mixers. But this, you know, when we talk about the gins we made, my favorite is our. Is our signature gin, which is the first one we've made. This is my favourite. Uh, everything else is a spin off from that. Correct. Itself. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, good. I mean, as you, if you really hammered home, which is great that the collaborations you're having are, are boring some amazing fruits. Mm -hmm. um, on, on both, I know you said, but also on both styles. I that. 
from a, a, a lightable fragrant element. This is our head distiller, and it's just his head, which is amazing. <laughs> uh, but also that kind of richer style as well. So, yeah. and dare I say, it also says two very different elements of consumers, because yeah. even though, as, as I mentioned before, that lockdowns offered us some great opportunity, mm -hmm. this not many of us have really gone to the other side of the spectrum that we prefer as well. So yeah. to have something that hits both scales, well, listen, and then you've got a kind you, of middle ground. I think you said it. I think you said it right. Uh, uh, there are different consumers and there's different groups and there's different there's different markets and I think uh, as a producer you need to try and work with all of those as okay. best you can to make a, an amazing product that will appeal to different sectors. That's our story. Now you've already already mentioned before, but just to clarify, what's coming next? <laughs> uh, I can't talk about it yet. Uh, <laughs> we are. We're looking at some other things. We've got some. You're squirming a little bit there. Other things, yeah. Uh, we're not ready to announce yet. That's fine. And um, I would say watch this space. Are we talking definitely next year? Yes. Yeah. Before uh, the year's yeah. out? What? Before the year is out? Well, next year, before the year's out. Yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah, in Christmas. Oh, no, no, we won't be announcing oh. it this year. No, no, no. <laughs> the announcement this year is uh, using the discount code. Discount code? What? Are you saying that people can purchase the bottle? I am. Where from? Uh, I wish I'd learned this bit. <laughs> uh, I want to say the spirit of uh, spiritofmanchester.co.uk. I'm sure Dave will put a link in there because... I'll put a link in there. Or if you go to the manchestertin.co.uk website, on our <laughs> shop, one of our is available. But if you use the discount code... So if you use the discount code, rum on the couch. Very, very simple. on the couch. Um, you'll be able to... Receive obviously a fifteen percent discount. Fifteen uh, percent off go. the full range. The full range, fantastic. Uh, so thank you, sir, for doing that for uh, all our followers here today. Um, but I mean, I, I think we've really hammered home, and uh, what I have definitely seen, and it's I, I, yeah, thank you for yourself and Dan for showing the versatility yeah. of this brand. It's something I, I have to admit I don't do too much on rubbing the couches. Um, as I mentioned to yourself, that, that limit I, I want to keep to fifteen minutes. But on the odd occasion, it's, it's really good to yeah. immerse yourself into a rub, especially from my point of view, a brand I've not really sat down and gave a go, which is why I reached yeah. out to yourselves a couple of weeks ago, to get my head around what Manchester's doing. Because at yeah. the very beginning, I did mention that a lot of people have that expectation that rum is still very much the Caribbean. And don't be wrong, ladies and gentlemen, it is. However, when you've got you... someone like yourself yeah. who are willing to understand what rum as a category is yeah. and having your own spilling it in the most authentic way you can yeah. as a British point of view this is a great brand to have as a conversation and that's all we've sought to do listen if you are a huge purist where it needs to spend 15 years in a barrel I'm going to be brutally honest this isn't for you yeah. but that is something we will live and die by we are we are we have made something that we think is a truly amazing product uh, as a botanical rum using all the things we've learned through distillation and we're trying to do it in the best way we can fantastic well i appreciate your honesty uh, i appreciate you spending the time with me today to go through the brand and to give us some context as well uh, and as you say it's still well it's less than a year old so if you've never come across this uh, this before do obviously pop in to three little words uh, I forget what the street is now. Watson Street. Watson Street. Yeah. <laughs> or underneath the old GMEX or Manchester Central, depending yeah. what area you're in. Yeah. Um, I'm GMEX. You're G, I saw mine. <laughs> but pop on onto, onto Watson Street, uh, book yourself in for some great Sunday roasts. Yes. Um, With a <laughs> painkiller. Oh, there you go. Just checking. Yeah. Um, but obviously, to experience the rums yourself, if you already have a bowl or if you wish to use that discount code of Rum on the Couch to get 15%. I will put that link in the description to cover Seb's uh, my, back on that one. My inability to say our own website name, <laughs> uh, whether it's The Spirit of Manchester or Spirit of Manchester, I don't know. I'll check for you, it's Fine. okay. Um, but do let us know if you've had it before, what you prefer to enjoy it with, uh, how do you, or what is your favorite out the range if you had the opportunity to try all three so far, or if you don't, which one are you intrigued about? This is the best way, and I think Seb's really hammered home, how a brand and a company like yourself understand what is next to bring yeah. out. We do listen. It's crazy, isn't it? It's bizarre, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And internationally driven with Chile as well. Chile, so who knew? So if you're probably Chile, if you're watching this from Chile, let us know which Please is your message. Please message in. I mean, 
I'm going to have a trip out there as a business trip. <laughs> so that's what tax man requires. I know, it's amazing. So, Sam, I, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but thank you very much. Thank you. Much appreciated. Pleasure. We're going to finish these. We're going to finish all these and the rest of the bottles <laughs> and do no more work on a Monday. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you getting involved. If you're watching this on YouTube or Instagram, do please make sure you're following us. If you're on Facebook, give us a share, tagging your friends so they can see what One-Eyed Rebel is all about. But until then, I will see you hopefully next week for the next Rub on the Couch episode. Thank you guys.